Thanks. Thanks. Good evening. Welcome to today's session of November 14th, 2023. Donna, do you have a roll call, please? I will. Council Member Bode? Here. Council Member Sherman? Here. Council Member Gutierrez? Here. Mayor Nesco? Here. Deputy Mayor Schmidt? Here. Council Member McDowell? Here. And Council Member Peterson? Here. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Public Works Director Jay Harris has information for us about the Transportation Impact Fee Program. Good evening, I'm Mayor Jay Harris, your Public Works Director. Uh, a few weeks ago at study session, uh, I gave a presentation. There were some questions about traffic impact fees and really going back to what are they, what do they do, how do we charge them, those sort of questions were coming up. So I wanted to take a step back for a moment and um, go over some of these items. So uh, next slide, please. So um, traffic impact fees are one time, one time charge uh, assessed by the local government against a new development, um, and it pays for expanded or new capital facilities that uh, addresses the increased demand for services by the development. And um, so under the Growth Management Act, uh, we collect uh, traffic impact fees. We had to have an ordinance, obviously we did, we adopted an ordinance uh, for that. And public streets and roads are sort of the highlighted thing there. There's other things you could collect impact fees for. Um, schools, for example, um, they have a pretty low one here. In, in schools, Shelton School does. Um, my understanding, we don't have anything for parks today. We don't have an impact fee for parks. It's something council can consider. Um, we do have a, a transportation impact fees for road zone. Um, so uh, pretty much, the, Traffic impact fees uh, take the cost for new transportation facilities um, and um, they charge the development for those rather than charge like the channel fund or the channel public in ways. So the new development and the growth of the new development is paying for the expanded roadway improvements needed for that development. The next slide. Also, tenant improvements would be it. You'd be charging traffic impact fees for a tenant improvement if they were adding space to their potentially yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah so, that's, that's part of is that in here that's yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, okay. yeah. yeah. because it's a yeah. okay so here's some key principles okay um it can only be used for capital facilities so the road facility and can be used for operations and maintenance that's big so it's for span right um and that uh it can correct existing deficiencies in your system but it can be used to expand facilities. So a lot of times if you have severe deficiencies like huge transportation backup, like the TBD fund or a state grant or other things are gonna have to go in with traffic impact fees, the traffic impact fees for the new development and for the capacity. So if you have an existing deficiency, I can't go and use traffic impact fees to solve that existing deficiency. This comes all out of the state code, right? Um, and I can't use 100% of traffic impact fees for a project, right? So even though it might make sense where I gotta buy land, I gotta build a roundabout, it doesn't exist today, and it's all 100% new traffic because it doesn't exist today. You know, there's no road there, let's say. The state says, I can't use 100%, so I gotta put a dollar in the front somewhere else, or whatever. Here's where you do a proportional thing. So we're updating the existing facility. There's existing deficiencies. We use TBD or, or grant funds. And then we supplement the project, and I'll get to that in a minute, some of the ones we've done um, with traffic impact fees. So, um, so the tip credits can be given to developments to build identified capital capacity projects. We're having conversations with developers, okay? Uh, we have uh, uh, people like Olympic Heights, for example, at the college, that intersection has some backup uh, right around school time, right? And so there's some issues there with them trying to get their traffic out. They sort of hit a little log jam right there. So there's potential to um, take um, traffic impact fees that they would pay and uh, that they go build project of whatever is identified. And then uh, when they pick up their building permit, we waive some of those traffic impact fees that they would have paid. And the good thing about that is um, if it's an identified improvement, it needs to be in our capital plan, our comprehensive plan, um, 
that we're using private dollars to and private engineering to build and, and construct things, you know, for the future for the city. Typically, they add more capacity than what their need would be to. We pay them for additional capacity for others to use in the in the future. So uh, we don't have to pay prevailing wage because it's private contracting work, right? So there's a lot of benefits to the city. And the city, I'm loaded with projects right now, right? I mean, we have a lot going on for the, the small staff I have. So it does take the weight off of some of the things we need to do and, and puts it on, on private developers. Um, so this is the new one as of July, at the, at the second bullet point from the bottom, that uh, they can be used for uh, bicycle and pet facilities. You got to connect two or more destinations, which I thought was a little odd that RCW got that in. But obviously, you got to go from here to there. But that was in there. But um, that's a new one that they put in there. And um, it was that can make a difference in the future. So um, we're working on our transportation component um, of our plan next year. And so we have uh, the transportation plan, which is the car part of it. And then we'll have um, the multimodal sidewalk and, and, and that part of the plan also. We're gonna identify projects, the Simpson Trail will be one of them, um, that potentially could use traffic impact fees to fund a piece of that project, right? So um, they'll be good in the future to maybe use for some more pedestrian type of projects around the community, especially to start connecting things up a little more, right? Why Why can't you use 100% of the cost of the project? Yeah, uh, RCW fixed that for us. I didn't. And so I'd have to go back and look at the legislative notes. But I think they're just saying that you never do a full capacity improvement. And I brought up that one where there's no road existing and I got to build a signal and a new road. Nobody's there today. RCW says that you can't bill it 100% towards new development or impact fees. So this provision that they have, I think they once onus of city dollars in projects, whether you know it's gas tax funds or a TBD or maybe a grant where we use TIF funds and go secure a grant for some things. They just want to see if that makes some money. Want to see the city a little more responsible instead of and we should plan projects and have some buy yeah. on. Okay. Well and not just the people living in that development are going to use that road or that roundabout, right? So yeah. that makes sense. It should pick up some existing deficiencies somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, and this, and I can see where this, I can kind of understand maybe where the language, why the language is specific like that, because then you can run into the problem of the development paying for a specific improvement. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, yeah. and that's not the case. I just remember when, you, when the school bond passed and we were talking <clears> about <throat> their TIF at the high school, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, you, know, you guys are going to make us build a roundabout, you know, you're just needing to, it's like, no, that. It's the impact to the system, but you keep saying traffic, transportation. It's transportation, not just traffic. So what I'm stuck on, unfortunately, is Oregon. Yeah, these these traffic impact fees, and then unfortunately, in our municipal code, we call it traffic impact fees too. So I was programmed, but in the new yeah. ordinance, I'll be bringing you. I'm going to transportation. Yeah. I got to change this library. All this right. But it's it is traffic. Rewire, rewire. Okay, but it's more. It's always It's more than it's more than yeah. I, I did have one. Considered bike. Yeah, yeah, in a meeting I had with Carlos. But it's traffic. Okay, so then there also can be some G yeah. reductions or waivers. Okay, so um, if you find that the impact caused by the development doesn't place a burden on the system, okay, so there's findings that this particular use doesn't have any more traffic, right? And so uh, those are a little hard to determine, right? I guess example could be maybe a helipad, right? Where you're going up and down, right? You don't use, but then you can make a finding, well, people leaving need to pull their car in there, right? To maybe leave that all that. So things like that. But uh, there are instances of people that might not pay an impact fee for a type of development or type of use. That'd be very rare. Most likely an adoption, right? Rather than that's a waiver. It's very hard to find so it's a use that does not generate any traffic. So um, there's also RCW allows um, impact um, waivers or, or accurate reduction. 
for low income housing, early learning facilities, or developments with broad public purpose. Um, and then those items, if you waive a piece of that fee, somebody else has to make it up. Okay, so um, it, the, the city general fund or a grant or whatever, you still need to have whatever the fee charge, the fund still needs to go. You know, the traffic impact needs whole. You can waive it, but another fund, at the city, like the general fund, would need to contribute whatever the proportional cost was. So uh, I guess like this, if you had a reduction for low income, for example, um, you might have some low income sales tax or some tra traffic or some uh, revenue source that helped offset some of those traffic impact fees. Mm -hmm. So that's a key point. Does it? Yes. Yeah, offsetting that from someplace else. Right. And I didn't make this, it's right in RCW yeah. day. So uh, next slide. I have a question that might, yeah. I don't know if we're in the right area or if we're ever going to be in the area. So they're in the urban growth and they're building a house. There's no road. There's there's no traffic impact fee, obviously, because it's the, it's the urban growth. And then we add it into the city, then nothing. We we accept no, we accept the conditions, essentially. Yes. So, so, oh, go ahead. Are you done with we, No, I'm just... Accepts. It's rolling in my head. Go ahead. So my question uh, <clears throat> for the low income housing early learning um, facilities developments. Okay, so maybe it's built for that, and then later down the road it changes use. What happens? Yeah, I'll get to that in okay. a few minutes. So I'm going back. So, here. Yeah, so I'm going. Well, I stole my head. So I'm going back. So we annex this area. There's no road. And then we're required to put it in at the taxpayers' dollars. Correct. Still getting behind. Um, or it's substandard road. Or it's a substandard maybe, it's a gravel, road. maybe it's a gravel road. Um, I don't know, provided to five, six, seven houses, something like that. Yeah. So it's a substandard road the city then inherits. And then now that's added to our CIP later down the road for, for improvements. And so when a bunch of people develop in the county on septics or whatever within our UGA, we're not charging traffic impact fees. Um, we charge for sewer connection charge later and a water connection charge, and they, they would pay a chunk of facility charges, but the building's already built, right? So we don't charge a traffic impact fee. The county doesn't have a traffic impact fee either. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, things for the developer. Oh, in Belfair, they might, they don't, they don't hear in our UGA. One of the things they're talking about, we're going through this big planning effort with them at the same time that we're doing it as a joint manager type of thing, is um, that within the UGA, that they apply a traffic impact fee equal to the amount that we would charge, right? And then that money is collected and put into a fund to identify improvements within the UGA and within the city limits. Of course, specifically uh, adopt development standards, city development standards within the UGA as part of the conversation with the comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. Sewer, water, streets, okay. yeah. local roads, street lights, those sorts of things. So, Make progress on that? It yeah. hasn't started yet, yeah, really. Yeah, but that, Just that, years, that's a topic. Years past. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, it obviously will start on a staff level. Yeah. It has to be. So, a little more on Eric's comment. So, you've got a you build a house out of the UGA, and the roads are dirt and everything, so you leave it. But then they're annexed into the city limits. Is there a charge? No. It would be the future houses. Or the future businesses. Yes, yeah, if there's an empty lot next to that house, is annex if they construct it now within the city limits, they okay. would be subject to the city's fees and you know, and, and development standards. Right. All right. Um, so that that's uh, one of the ways to do it. Another way UGA development could happen is you have to annex to the city in the UGA if you want to develop, and you have to hook the water and sewer. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, very common in a lot of other cities. So there's different ways to do that. The problem is with that is you don't get, we have leapfrog development going on all over the place. The development goes linear then because you have to extend logical services, you know, that are cost effective. So you sort of build your way out of the UGA typically. And people sort of annex as, as super water facilities are extended. So that's another model. Um, but you can't go to the far corner of the UGA and put a septic system in, which is allowed now, potentially for well, 
right? We get it from that one. So um, anyways, things are a little different here. So traffic impact fees. So how much, is, was there any final questions on that last slide? No? Um, so how much is the tip calculated? So it's a per vehicle trip generated during the peak and peak hours. And it's determined by the use of the property. And then the use trip generation data from the Institute of Traffic Engineers. It's a national type of model. And um, the rates are adopted each year uh, for inflation. They're in the master fee schedule, which you guys saw at the last meeting. So um, the traffic impact fee for residential housing is a flat rate per unit, regardless of the size of a home. So if you have a thousand foot single family or 4,000 square foot fam single family, the TIF is sort of averaged out for all single family because most communities have differing types of housing and the impacts from all of the users for single family equal about the same. But there's uh, another one for uh, commercial fees. Um, and I'll show you those in a minute. Um, and that's for a gross uh, floor area. Apartments are number of dwelling units. Gas stations are by the number of vehicle fueling position. This is what they call it in the ITE. It's the number of pumps, right? Um, and then, uh, anyways, I have uh, the table on the next page. And then these are just some footnotes that we have on the table that sort of guides you how, what some of the acronyms are and that sort of thing. Um, anyways, next page. Jay, is that, yes. is that number, the way that the fueling pumps are placed does that have a big impact on how the traffic is? How it comes? Is that what that is for? Yes, more pumps, more traffic. It, but if you put them, does it matter which way you put the pump? But they typically build so you can always access them, right? Uh, when you're designing the station, so um, there should be an issue there with that. And then also, you might have a lot of pumps, but not sell a lot of gas for various reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor probably knows why. Well, I mean, usually it's the price. It's on a sign and people don't like it. They keep driving by. But it could be level service, how the station looks, those sorts of things. So, but the traffic impact fee, it's a natural average based on pumps and trip generation on average what a station would generate. But like Fred Meyer Fuel, right? Probably per pump generates more traffic than, and Argo probably also is in that same than a Chevron, you know, right downtown or something that maybe has their core type of station. They typically don't generate as much traffic as some more of the wholesale gas stations, but the fee per pump is a national average. It's all the same. It's only for, but that'd only be for like a new, a new build. It would be a new build. Or yeah. we wanted to change, add change of yeah. 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 yeah, we had an individual several yeah. years ago that talked about adding pumps to the station that would have changed. Additional tip. improvement. Yeah. Right. So you got it. Can you remind me? Um, do we have parking minimums for commercial? Uh, in, yes, in some zones. Yeah. In some zones. Yeah, not in the downtown, but like CRV, general commercial. Have really, really. Wait, what's the point of that? Minimums. Good question. Sorry. Okay. okay. No problem. Yeah, and it's going to be addressed okay. as well. Yeah. Just a question. Yeah. So here is traffic impact fee schedule. You see a single family residential, $4,700 for every new unit. Okay. Um, Multi-family is $2,800. And you go down uh, the residential uses, you can see all those. Um, some of the commercial services, hotel uh, per room is an ITE code 310. And um, they are at uh, 2700 um, And uh, there's been talk of hotels, right? And uh, in some are needed in this area. Um, nothing is quite keen to fruition today, but there's eventually things that have to happen, right? Do you have any idea why it's so high for hotel for a room? That's the actual trip generation per room uh, based on uh, the number of units. So you can see if you go all the way to the top, the basic trip rate is about one. The single family home is about almost 10 trips per day per house. That's you, your kids, 
that's the uh, Amazon truck, that's the mail, um, that's the meter reader. You add all the uses of, and some of them are pass by trips, right? And some of them are direct trips in and out. But so they take a basic trip of one. So you can see down at the hotel, they're saying it's about 60% of a residential unit. Oh, okay. What seems about right when someone pulls in. So. No one visits seniors though. So I mean, it's as yep. senior adult living is like 0.11. Correct. Yeah. Very low because most people don't drive, right? So the calculation is the cost of new trip generation, you see it at 46, by what is it, 54, 57? And that's multiplied by the, the trip rate. If you see new trip rate in the second to last column to the to the right. So you'll just multiply. So if it was a one, it's at 46, 54, 57. Again, it's whatever, 1.01, 1.01. That's why it's 47, 11. So that's how it's calculated. Hotel, motel in Olympia is three thousand eight hundred and two dollars or per hotel. So any questions about the tip schedule? This is the first time I've actually seen the impact of the schedule. Mm -hmm. And this is also a master masterpiece schedule. Part of masterpiece part of masterpiece it's it, an attachment. You get a really good restaurant. I'm really surprised at the amount for a restaurant compared to a hotel room. Yeah, now on the restaurants you want to watch, is it um, a, a sit-down restaurant or is it a high turnover, fast food, we drive through um, tavern drinking place, that's always a good place to go. Um, anyways, you can see the different categories. Okay. And when you go to the Institute of Traffic Engineers manuals, they have a full page describing exactly what that type of use is and how they calculated the numbers and you know how they came up with averages. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I'm understanding some of these. So supermarket, 3114. Where does per person, per square foot? Yes. Uh, for a thousand square feet of gross area, or okay, because I'm, I'm going over the other side and going, oh wow, thirty-seven thousand dollars for a gas station. So those commercial are based on the square footage, yeah. okay, rather than the, the flat rate. So and on, and on the next page, I got a calculation that shows how you can do one of these from that okay. table. Uh, at next page, so a new restaurant. Hey, okay, that's fun. So um, you multiply the, the square footage by the traffic impact fee that's shown on the far right column that corresponds to whatever business type you want. So a new 1,500 square foot uh, quality restaurant, we pay a one-time traffic impact fee of the 1,500 square feet by the 2788 show on the table and $41,000 traffic impact fee for the new restaurant. So that pays for their new trips they're adding to the system over the life of that restaurant or that structure, right? And so they can always change use, right? So down the road, if the restaurant goes out of business, they can change use. If it's a reduced use, there's no credits back. But if they increase the use from the restaurant, then um, a, a charge would be that's higher, a higher trip generation than the commercial restaurant, we would charge an additional fee. So that one-time fee sort of runs with the property or, or the improvement. So change of use. So we need to look to see if it generates a, a more or less vehicle trips. If it's more trips, we charge a fee. If it's less, then you just use the old fee that was previously charged. So the supermarket submits a mentor model, a 6,000 square foot auto parts store. And <laughs> think it's something plausible here. What are your auto parts store with the supermarket wants to go in? So the tip for the supermarket, without the offset, without the auto parts store, if they build a brand new one, would be $186,000 for a 6,000 square foot supermarket. And um, the auto parts store would be $95,000 if they built or you subtract the two, and okay. so the supermarket, because of an increased trip rate, would owe $91,000. The, um, these fees are charged by
by all surrounding cities, right? This isn't anything unusual. Ever. I see some shock on people's faces. These are big numbers. But to be honest with you, our numbers are somewhat tame compared to others. Okay, so um, anyways, I'm used to where I came from. These numbers were quite a bit higher in a lot of different Well, places. Olympia must not be fussing with them because they're, they've got building and new building and everything going up in Olympia. Yep. So the fees, they must just figure that's what it is. That's what it is. They use those for capacity projects. It's a different economy, too. Though. Yeah. I mean, an entry level home there is twice what an entry level home is here. And it, it's. Well, I'm thinking of all the, the uh, condos downtown. Yeah. You know, but, but just, I mean, it's 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 just a different economy of scale, too, though. I'm, I, like running some of these numbers, I mean, most small restaurants will never be able to open. They could yeah. potentially make their money back over there a little faster yeah. than we can. Yeah. Unfortunately, our transportation costs are the same. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Because uh, per, per mile lane here is the same cost as Olympia to construct. Um, yet, yeah, these yeah. businesses aren't realizing potentially the same, oh, right. same return yeah. on their investments. And, and the other thing, yeah. these fees were calculated quite some time ago. These are like 2018 fees, and we've increased a couple times because a few years of inflation before I got here, there's been some inflation adjustments. But when we get done with the new transportation comp plan, coming with a year from now, maybe something like that, we're going to have a brand new project list. We're going to have project valuations. We're going to have on their PNP volumes, new trips, existing trips, what's different, divide the total project costs, come up with that new base tip fee for council to see. Okay. Who's keeping track of these change of uses? Because I could tell you, probably on railroad, we probably had one building with 10 change of uses over the years. I mean, well, as a guess, so a change use it can go from mercantile to mercantile. If you're, uh, you know, if you're a bookstore to a candy store, it's not going to be technically a, a bookstore to a restaurant, a and then bookstore a restaurant, restaurant to be, that's mercantile uh, a restaurant. gift shop, you know, mm -hmm. restaurant to a gift shop. So if they're permitting, so yeah. right, if you apply for a business license yeah. or apply for a building permit, then you get you get notified that there's a change of use application required, and then we review that change of use application, determine what the what use will be when it's calculated appropriately at that time. And we try to bring those up at the pre submission conference. So I highly recommend anybody doing any tenant improvements or anything come in and talk to the city and have a conference with us. So you know before you sign a lease or anything what the fee would be because you can walk into a, a form of business where there really isn't any fee because it was a higher trip generator, or you can buy something that has been vacant for an extended period of time. The TIF code has a five-year limit on it. So if it's been vacant for five years, right, the fee re it goes back to you, you would, whatever your improvement was, you would have to redo it. That's the current TIF ordinance. Yep. So that's why it's prudent that, and we welcome people to come in and talk to us about each use, each address, right? Because they all vary a little bit, um, especially on the commercial side. Single family residential is just that flat fee, no matter the size you're building. But it's important to come talk to us. Okay. So I just want to go start changing restaurant uses downtown and get, get tiff rich. <laughs> $100,000 in equity in each building just off the fees they want to have to pay. <laughs> um, are there any land uses that we don't have identified here that exist in the city limits? So essentially, it's going to be anything that is not subject to TIF, other than the elementary school has 10A in there that should probably have enough. Okay, what was the number that you told me? The elementary school does apply. Yeah, well, I know they don't get any TIF from the big mountain people. Because, because it's simply like for life, right? Because they, they, never took down the old mountain. they didn't take down the old mountain. They're, they're using it for- They committed to use it for office purposes or storage. Yeah. Is my understanding. Okay. Um. Yeah, and as those as those change over time without a permit process. Um. Yeah. Yeah. They very well. Okay. So where does? What's the number that you told me they're that they're called the five o? Five one c threes the nonprofits or yeah. oh f no five o twos yeah where are those in here thank you yeah where are those in here so those would probably fall under um, either warehousing 
Okay. Um, just they've argued that it depends on the building permit, right? So sometimes it's either a processing unit, so it might fall, excuse me, by what would be um, some of, some of, um, so when you go to the actual IT manual, it says what all the similar uses and two that category is yeah. like toys, so it's a warehouse right. too, well, depending on the, what they're doing inside the building. Right. Well, some of them might be a convenience type store, would that fall maybe? Yeah, yeah if they're a retail yeah. establishment. I guess they fall under there. Retailers. They definitely bring traffic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where would S more like a the mill fall. Industrial. Industrial. Yeah, industrial. That's what I'm kind of saying. Like, do we actually identify all of the uses? Because, no. Uh, yeah, okay. But there's, like Jay said, the, the manual has more specific. Uh, definitions to the titles. These are the most common ones. The IT land use codes, there's some others that aren't shown here. The table will be quite a bit longer without these. So, whoever produced this table um, it, it's a little abbreviated. You see longer tables with other cities. But the good news is, is if it's not on here, you can go to the IT manual and tell you what the trip code is. Um, one thing I didn't explain to you also is see a new trips column on there. And especially even down to commercial services, there's a bypass rate down there, somewhere at 57%, 60% sort of thing. Ooh. What that means is if I'm going to a daycare center, I'm likely driving by the bank right after that, and then maybe going to quick move or something, right, to get my car done. So they add those up as a full trip sometimes, usually it's two different uses for one trip. So that's called the pass-by rate. And so the new trip rate was reduced. Each unit you can see has a trip generation, but if you reduce it because the trips are out on the road, doing other errands and stopping by other places. So that's an important concept that the ITE uh, put in their manual some years ago. Yeah, they have a video of rental store. Yeah. yeah. I'm really glad that they have that. Yeah. Um, Coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Fine stock. Fine stock. So, so this is just within the city limits. If you just go outside the city limits, you don't have to pay these? Nope. Right. Now, the county, though, does have a road fund. Okay. Basically, right. offset that or other taxes. Okay. So, right. The general property tax for with the road fund. Right. right. I'm just looking at if I'm a developer coming right. to this area, I want to open in a business. Do I want to be here or do I want to be over well, there? Well, if you have so the infrastructure like, just outside right. the city, too. No. I, 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 I impact development is not happening in the county. So, you know, again, if you're looking to build new or redevelop, um, you know, in, in, dense, in higher density and in higher impact areas, it's, it's not in it's not why did you say that the county doesn't have traffic impact? They don't. They haven't adopted fees. traffic impact fees. Uh, they have. They have a general road fund, general property tax. Mm -hmm. So, county residents pay uh, their general property tax to support road funds that support capacity projects in theory. So essentially, all the county residents are paying for that impact, as opposed for as opposed to the impact paying for the impact. I don't know how people always feel about that. We don't, we don't out of our property tax to pay for transportation. So that's why we have. I appreciate it. Okay, hey, you guys ready for yeah. slide seven? So here are our current adopted uh, traffic impact project list. Transportation impact fee project list. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so here's the list of the projects. One of the goals here is uh, these are all capacity projects. Um, we're uh, going to update this. There's some things that need to be shown on here. We're going to be working on getting you guys a, a more current update uh, to the list because um, some of the projects are being completed. Um, and uh, anyways, there's a few others that need to be added, that sort of thing. 
So uh, staff's going to be getting you this updated list. It needs to be adopted uh, by ordinance. Uh, so when we bring the traffic impact fee ordinance to you, there's changes. I'll go over those in a minute. It's on another slide. We're going to bring in an updated list to talk about uh, projects also. Any questions about the projects? We have plenty in queue, so we're not having right, money to generate. We're not going to be. We're not going to have too much um, money. Water is one of our <laughs> most important projects, right. right? That we're really concentrating on water. You'll see some street projects still coming out, but we need to make sure that water capacity is online for the road. That's one of our bigger rollups. So uh, on slide eight, you'll see the traffic impact key comparison. You can see the red arrow there um, of where Shelton is. That number is just a little lower um, because this is 2023. The slide that you saw was adjusted for 2024. Um, that's in your current packet for the next meeting. So um, North Bend is the high price leader. They got cut off at 15,200 and something. And then um, anyways, you go all the way down. So you see the average is at 5362 down the bottom there. And then we're below average on the traffic impact fees. We're in the ballpark, though. We're in the ballpark. We're almost average. <laughs> Do they take into consideration per capita? Or? But that, no, these are cities big and small. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just a list of cities right on here. Just some of the businesses that are going to come into a smaller town are going to be different than the businesses that are coming into a bigger town. That's correct. And then some of the cities that are built out, you know, you're at a boundary and you can't build it more. You're trying to get back to these can be pretty well or your projects have been done, right? right? So the, the, theoretically, if we had a containment and we could always stay within that boundary, would go down significantly over the years because once everything was built, you wouldn't need to do that anymore. Shelton mm -hmm. is a long ways off from that, though, right? But uh, a lot of uh, oh, like Seattle cities and that sort of thing, they're surrounded by other cities, they're built around mm -hmm. traffic impact, these plummet significantly at that point. One thing to note that's interesting uh, kids out county, Christian County, mm -hmm. on this uh, graph. Hmm. I have a question. I'm curious. So let's say um, we've got the city and we have the county that wants to build a building. Are they exempt to traffic impact fees? Churches are. So we're currently in elementary school. Unless they're in the county and not, if they're in the UGA, they would have to pay. Right. If they're in the city limits, if you generate trips, you pay a fee. So how, where on this list would they be? I mean, just they're not on here, but just they'd be it's probably a commercial easy. building. It's, oh, it's okay. they'd be on one out of one of the commercial leases. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Answered my question. Sorry. Well, I just wanted to make a comment real quick. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm for changing the name to transportation. And I'm also secondly, like I think we should be about average or we aspire to be Pulsbo or Port Orchard, like other communities that are on the South Puget Sound or Puget Sound, we should probably get our rates up to where they are around 20% more. That's my first initial feedback. Um, yeah, yeah, so that rate in the next year, year and a half will be recalculated. And it is what the costs of these improvements are. Remember, inflation hit hard, right? Uh, we've gone up since 2018, 25%, 80%. I mean, pick a number, but it is up there. Right, and so the fee we're charging right now um, is lower than it probably should be. And so um, anyways, and then you look at all the projects on the list, the ones that got done. Now remember we've used some grant funding that helped, like Western Gateway was one of them up there. And we got some grant funding for that, which is we complete projects, and if we can get people to assist us with the projects by these state funds, um, Theoretically, over time, your traffic impact fee should stay pretty stable. Um, you know, that you can use traffic impact fees, some the TBD dollars, and some state dollars, and sort of run the projects off of different funding pots. So we're not talking tonight for looking for any 
direction for raising any fees. Uh, no, no. no, there is no fee other than in your council packet, master fee schedule. There's an inflation adjustment that's already adopted by ordinance, um, the, 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 the CPI for that. And so uh, that's the only thing is he went up a little bit for inflation, but we're not changing the fee or readopting the fee. Okay. Not the method is kept. Not, not the methodology, just the amount went up by inflation. So uh, past projects, uh, Laurel Street, uh, 13th and Laurel, that was way before my time here. Um, there's a bunch of projects that were constructed about the same time um, that included uh, Laurel again and uh, Lake Boulevard. Uh, some of those were all together in the same time that epic. Uh, the next big one was uh, Downtown Connector, a uh, construction and design, these traffic impact fees. Uh, those were capacity creating projects. You know, they added quite a bit of trouble there. Um, and then Western Gateway, we used traffic impact fees on that uh, to offset some of our matches to the state. And so we currently have about 700,000 in the, in the traffic in transportation impact fee fund. I got it. And they have to be spent within 10 years of collection, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, right now, the last in, we're about 2030 on spending that. So, latest one in. So, we're still okay on the, the 10 year thing. Otherwise, we have to refund the, the feedback to yeah. the, the end of the developer. So the dollar has less purchase than power you move forward and say we don't want to sit on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh next slide. So um so transportation impact fee municipal code changes that I'd like to bring you folks. Um go to transportation impact fees right through the word traffic. That matches our CW. Um, our current uh, municipal code calls on traffic impact fees is bad. It should be transportation impact fees. Um, Do we want to go through these just one at a time for consensus for the for these suggestions? You'll have a, you'll have an opportunity to vote on those if we, uh, at a later date. Um, well, is that so, suggested code changes? So absolutely, it's coming. It's coming back. Yeah, it's coming yeah, back. Yeah, with, yeah. So yeah, so cool. should we, okay. So Make changing sure the names the are age. we have consensus to change the name to the transportation impact fees. So we used to bring it to council. Yes, council. correct. Yeah, I'm sorry. Perfect. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We'll make sure that we're yeah. We're clear. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. And, and then the next one was um, that the project list gets a little old quickly. If I have to adopt it by ordinance, keep bringing it back, bring it, keep bringing it back. I'm working with the city attorney to see if we can, in the yearly tip, the transportation impact, uh, transportation improvement program through the state. I got to handle the projects every year, and those are all capacity projects because um, they're on state roadways that are th and they're identified as capacity projects. I'm going to work with the city attorney to see if when that's adopted, if that list would be similar to adopting, because I don't want to do the TIP and the transportation impact fee ordinance. They're two very similar maps, if you know what I mean. So um, I'm going to speak to them a little more about trying to make that a little clean, more clear cut for you guys. Okay. So um, anyways, more to come on that from the city attorney. Okay, um, and then uh, credits. So if a developer constructs an eligible capacity project um, that's adopted within the uh, that's in the adopted plan, um, then we can negotiate credits back to them so they don't pay full transportation impact fees. Um, and um, I spoke to a city attorney about that, and it's likely we're going to have all those go to council through a development agreement. That way. We got them. Staff doesn't have the credit methodology and a manual that we would use. Most bigger cities do that. We're not going to have a ton of these. I think it's important for you guys to see when we're giving credits to a project because they're constructing a capacity project that is front and center. It's on the list. Everyone knows about it. We know they're going to be building it and they're going to be giving some credits to that. Yeah, so I look transparent. So very transparent. So, okay. So, Olympic Heights, the first phase is 200 homes, 109 homes. So, that developer is going to put the intersection improvements or the road all the way down to the intersection there. 
So then he pays those impact fees or he gets a credit for those impact fees. And then the other 500 homes come in with a different, different developer. How's what's going on there? Is he, and he, again, is paying those same impact fees for the, or it doesn't have to be used for that purpose. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So yes. capacity improvements. So okay. Because the first guy for the 200 homes is probably going to do most of the improvements for that intersection. Well, or, potentially, if they're going to make any improvements to the intersection, they're going to do it to full build out. Okay? Yeah. Because they're not going to come in and, and do, a, do a, say, signalize it and then have to do a roundabout two years later yeah. when they build out more house. So yeah. they, they're going to build that and they build it to the to the future capacity. So they could get credit to that, point, okay. right? Okay. Any other future capacity, not, not just their development. But any any future capacity for any other development in the surrounding area, okay. that's where the credits. Because I was assuming that it's not going to be the same developer back there, because they I don't think they've sold all the par parcels yet, unless they've recently sold them. Um, I, well, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the home builder is, but it, it very well could be the same home builder. Um, that's that's quite often how it is. The developer, the land, the land developer is different than the home builder, and so they'll sell off the. The lots themselves for the development. So regardless of the first improvements, the next group is going to be paying the same fees for home. Okay. Do Got park it. districts have the opportunity to have a transportation impact fee or yeah. just cities and municipalities? I'm not transportation it'd be a park impact fee. It'd be a park impact fee. Impact fee. It, it's it's calculated the same way on on increased capacity. So if you have whatever it is, an apartment, a single family residence. Um, typically it's not on commercial development because in commercial development doesn't have, you know, impact parks. But if your single family household is you know, 2.96 or whatever census is, um, you take a CIP, your capital improvement program, and say this over, over the life span or whatever the build out of the city and the, the, um, the population growth will determine you know what parks are needed, what cost is to build those parks, that'll determine how much each residential unit essentially pays for it. Well, my question was because we can use this for parks, but none of the, the items on the list were parks. Oh, we can't use this for oh, parks. Okay. No, sorry. Yeah, that would be to, to that clarify, would be you can you can adopt a separate park impact fee or a separate, separate park uh, fire fire protection fee, yeah. But the transportation impact fee is solely for transportation okay. projects. Yeah. Sorry. We're just giving you examples of what other fees could be applied. You might be more familiar with like uh, our general facility charges, which are really close to the same as an impact fee for sewer and water services, storm services. Those are in place as well. So on the list here, um, the type of improvements that are eligible credits towards traffic impact fees, typically those are signals, uh, roundabouts, uh, paving, curbs, sidewalks for people to walk on uh, some things that uh, some people don't consider it's all by agencies sometimes they don't consider uh, drainage facilities sometimes they don't put in street lighting right um and i like fully improved roadways right and if we're requiring those type of things in our standards they probably should be eligible so our city attorney and i are looking at that a uh, land cost is eligible, so if you have to buy right away, RCW specifically states that that um, we have to pay people for for property tax valuation if they have to dedicate a purchase right away. It's one of the nuances in Washington. Um, so be, I, I'm working with the city attorney on the list of things. It's likely most things are going to be on there, you know, and we're not going to probably net much from that. Um, so you suggested that in lieu of uh, or credits would come to us in the form of development agreement with each time. Just for that yeah. credit agreement right. would come to council with ratification. Now, if that turns into a lot of busy work where you're seeing a lot of these, then we'll probably adopt additional credit methodology within the municipal code that at least sets the easier ones for staff to process, right? But um, well, we, we wanna be transparent with these fees and, and make sure everybody's involved with you know, the calculations and the methodology, uh, the time frame. A lot of cities, if you don't use those credits within five years, 
you can, because you just don't know where your house is built because you you pay at the time of the building permit. Um, there and the last one here is you can defer to all occupancy for residential on the uh, so uh, anyways. But uh, if you don't get all your houses built, um, use this five year period that uh, that uh, credit can go away. Okay, so uh, things like that will it will be in that credit agreement for for council to you know look at and um, adjust if needed. Something to consider with that. I was watching um, a video of a developer who developed in Colorado in an area, built these big, beautiful homes. Amazing. Nobody can afford them. The deferral wouldn't work for that because they've been sitting empty for two years. Brand new homes. Right? I don't know if there's a sunset on that or not. I don't know if there's still sunset on it. They, they could okay. still get the CMO. So that the CMO it doesn't mean that they've sold it, but they you know, the builder's been issued the CFO. That's when the um, the the TIF is is due in Washington okay. State. In Washington Not State. necessarily right. when somebody occupies it or is sold. It's when the certificate of occupancy is is issued. Okay, the certificate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's an understatement. Here, go back to your last question. Are, are you thinking about the political ramifications with? Um, uh, well, we've the, never we've never executed a DA as a council. Yeah. No. And I'm I'm not aware of one in my ten. We're sitting years. on like some residential construction booms, yeah. you know, over the next 10, 15 right. years, right? Stuff's gonna happen, whatever, regardless of what we do. Um, and I just see kind of to your point with a larger development that may have multiple builders at some point, and then having to do the equitable thing across each and then having to make that negotiated DA across, you know, essentially five, six, seven, and five, I don't know, you know, I'm just wondering how yeah. efficient that's going to be. Now for traffic impact fees, I can give, give you credit methodology. If you want it in the municipal code, I've done it at various agencies. Um, we thought it'd be more transparent to bring those to you, but I can bring you the actual you know, five-year term and they can't transfer yeah. one development. The other development, there's just a whole list of items there. I can put them in the code and staff can process the easier ones, the ones that are a little more difficult, we would leave in as another clause that anything that doesn't meet this list can maybe go in you know, as a development agreement if you choose. But we're, we're tailor making this to fit this body, right? And I feel more comfortable with something along those lines just because I think when you look at transparency from the other side, as a builder, it's a lot more transparent of a process to say this is how it's ordered and not we're negotiating and it might be different mm -hmm. for builder A than it is for builder B. So I think if there's a set of standards and there's, there's room within that to, to make common sense solutions, you know, where do you find that middle ground? I guess it's kind of what I'm looking at. I think you're right. There's certain things we should... Staff should be able to go down checklists if there's some fairly basic things, but if there's a more involved process that you think needs to come to council, absolutely. Um, what we don't want to do is have a burdensome process for staff or for a development community. We certainly want certainty for our development community, right? As much, much as we can try and develop it. Not right. right. This this tends to be kind of what's what's the term though? It it, it you know it, it's a little wishy-washy, I guess. It's a Literally. negotiation process, yeah. and what's yes. the developer willing to <laughs> take on themselves? And sometimes it can benefit the city so much more not having the stringent guidelines where, hey, we really need this done. We can negotiate a better deal. I don't know. I like the negotiation aspect of it because then we get to pick a little bit more of, of what's going on as opposed to now it's just going to be a rigid thing that staff's going to choose, and we're just going to get told what it is. So. Well, that choosing that would be set by you in the foreground for, right now. I understood, you know, but these to... projects are specific. Our needs are different. So what if we, you know, what if we're not thinking far enough ahead with making these standards as opposed to, like, we've got that development coming in. If someone develops this all out, it expands the capacity. And then if the next person doesn't have the opportunity to expand that capacity, then they're just paying the fee. But then possibly they could shift it over to expand it to a different direction. I don't know. I, we I like the negotiation. Realize, well, I realize there's it, it's, it's not going to be a, a broad range of projects, right? right? If we're talking about Olympic Heights, it's not going to be improvements on Olympic Highway North that are being considered to negotiate, right. right? So it, it, it's not this it's not this menu of, of, the, of the entire town. They're we're adjacent to They're, the they're adjacent to the right, right, so it, It's going to be a little more narrow, I think, than maybe 
we portrayed um, through a, a negotiation, if you will. And do they have to be for any rules other than that's just what you're saying? Or oh no, there's a host of rules. Okay. I, I don't. I don't Transportation I don't plans, capacity improvement. Okay. You know, um, you're going to need to submit a preliminary engineer's estimate and a preliminary letter requesting I, so staff can process it. I was it, specifically talking about the, the location of the location. Location. so yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. has to affect their building site or or we or they can say I want to build your multimodal trail down here for some TIF fees. As opposed to building my road out because the road's built up. Well, that's, where, that's kind of what I was starting to think about. That's right. what I'm asking. And right. there's a rule against that because to me, I could come in and say, I want to build a thousand homes, but the, the, the roads are already in, or I already have to put them in. But if I can waive all these fees, then I can build two new parks for you. Or we, we there, there are the rules against that. No, if it's, if it's in a comprehensive plan, the mm -hmm. transportation plan. Um, you can pick a project very unusual. Huh. Someone to pick a project over there, but if they felt it added value to their development, like the pedestrian trail thing that just came up, this multi-modal thing just came up, I can maybe see that someone saying, I need to extend that trail, but here and there, I've already built this part of my development, but this offsite trail is just connecting again. Yeah. So you see there's a common theme okay. that they connect, right? And one part I, It's going to be rare that the development we see in the next 20 years is not going to have capacity improvements required okay. right, with our current infrastructure, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. just, just looking at the looking at the condition from the ground today, but but there's there's also just like Eric said though, if, if you're that back developer that developed those last 200 homes and everything's already done up to it for you, I I just I don't know. Mm -hmm. that's just my place from it. I, mm -hmm. I see it it leaves it leaves it open for a lot more. I mean, we're negotiating now already. I mean, we were negotiating with somebody to maybe put in their own water tank just to get some houses built, right? And now we might not need that. But so, I mean, we're already negotiating. I mean, staff is already negotiating. Well, and just whereas, like, a developer can come in, I mean, they can do things so much cheaper than what a city can do for often. Absolutely. Yeah. If we're holding out a trail over there, you guys have, have to do it at a prevailing wage. It's going to be double what a normal person can build it. For. But if I have equipment and I have a guy who's ready to go, yeah. then. <laughs> My buddy was the asphalt right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like we've kind of gone Here through the directions. Yeah. Do you want to see what that looks like, I guess? I, is that what I put it is? in there as it, it's section with different elements in it, and you get you guys in. This is very typical. Most cities have it in there. So we're going to give you we're going to give you guidelines for this negotiation power. Is what we're going to do. I pre, I know that correct in advance. Correct. We're going to adopt that in the TIF ordinance. Coming up, we will set guidelines in there for staff to process the majority of. Them. And we're going to set the guidelines. So you're going to sounds yes. like and if, and if there's a threshold that yeah. that. Makes more sense to come back to council. We'll determine that threshold as a as a as a possibility, and you can review that within the code amendment. Yeah, well, that that sounds. I mean, as long as we're setting the guidelines for that negotiating power, then yeah, that sounds fine. Let's get some language in front of you, right? Yeah, so you can see it. Obviously, this is conceptual, but it, yeah. you can get some language in front of you. You can see what it looks like, digest it a little bit, make sense. We can adjust it from there, obviously, but. Um, some cities have adopted a whole manual on this subject. Uh, I there, right? yeah. Okay, I don't think we're at the side where we need that type of thing. Hmm. The DA requires three touch, and it's like hearing. Right. Yeah, I want to learn more about that. Yeah. So is, then, is that okay before we move along? Yes, okay, yes. we'll bring examples. Yeah, no, okay, so draft language. You guys I like a I like session it. on just this methodology. I mean, I can do that rather than bringing the whole ordinance to you. I think of the phone calls that we get when things come up with some part of this. Yeah. And, um, how that would go. So study session? Yeah. 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 You yeah. need to run through a couple of examples. I see like four or five nods so far. Six, yeah, seven. Okay, a couple oh, of sorry, seven. Here's seven. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Right. Lost count. Yeah, because we have things coming up, whether they're in um, the new tip ordinance 
the credit methodology, and if the staff takes care of that on that end with the methodology we both define, or if it comes to you as a DA, you're going to be hearing about it either way, later with the DA or right away with the tip ordinance. So, but there's a good thing about the DA can be a repetitive thing for right? a development agreement. And so uh, identifying those standards keeps an action from happening here um, as the number of developments increase. I just think it's, you know, those well, the phone call complaints a lot of times are related to time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Retouch on a development agreement's an extra month. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? I don't know. You know, I don't know what the advantage is or disadvantage at that point. If you're gonna go try to negotiate out the per thousand square foot you know, or whatever they choose, whatever the deal is for me. There's also a small complexity with that as the DA would come to you with preliminary costs and that sort of thing. The actual traffic impact fee credit or transportation impact fee credit um is based on actual construction costs at the end, right? It could be more, it could be less. You did that's how the credits are typically issued is on actual cost at the end. So you take a DA and then it takes a year or more to construct it, then you have actual final costs. The DA will speak to that, but it's a little more complex. So a couple last bullet points here is uh so the deferral system, we want to make sure that uh, we meet uh, state standards on that, um, that uh, occupancy for residential, all that. We're doing some checking to make sure that the, tra the transportation impact fee section hasn't been touched in a long time. So we're doing some checking in there. And then the last one is infill lots. So <laughs> in the traffic and transport, it's called traffic impact fee right now, but the transportation <laughs> impact fee section, um, that we're going to um, remove the definition of infill lots. The infill lots was those little small 150 foot or less improvements in the design centers. Remember that matrix we went through? Infill lots and the transportation impact fees that currently is written is anything that was platted prior to 1938, I think it's the year. Okay, so there's two conflicting parts of our standards that we want to take, take care of that. And so uh, currently, infill lots do not pay a traffic impact fee uh, in the current code. And I don't know if uh, with the current RCW, if, if that's even valid, they're generating trips. They say if you generate trips, you got to pay the fee. Right, so um, I'm checking with our city attorney on, on that part also. Yeah, because if you have four infill lots, there's there's a lot of traffic there, or even three. Just one adds traffic. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. okay no uh, so that's all I had tonight. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll circle back. I need to finish formulating the thought. <laughs> <laughs> No, not yet. Okay. You guys want to jump in? This is really this this I think these study sessions are priceless because all these questions in the back of our head and we don't think of them, you know, we just go about our business, but having them on paper and studying them is great. So uh, just I'm going to sell here a little bit. The three touch rules, uh, a lot of agencies, they do a lot of study sessions back off on that. A lot of things go on the city calendar. Like that. Sure. We're sitting here talking about things everyone understands. They put it on consent. You pull it from consent if you don't like something, if you want to ask questions, right. but it does expedite your meetings. Study sessions, what it's all about. This is where you understand the materials. Then it's presented to you. Uh, some of these want consent. Um, and uh, if, if anybody, even in the audience, can pull from the consent calendar, it's normally hit, it heard at the end of the business agenda, the action agenda, depending on what it's at. So I still get the full presentation. Yeah. 
it's all the materials that are, but it does shorten the meetings. Yeah, the county does that as well. But I, I, we should probably wait for the new uh, council before we make those decisions. It's, it's, you know, we've got. It's part, it's part, it's part of the annual. Yeah. Nice to open it thoroughly yeah. and, and and review any changes that are made at the same time. But um, you know, I think that at least portion, if not all, of this council made the conscious decision to uphold the three touch rule yeah um for transparency purposes i think we we could suit it a kind of a different format for study sessions uh, since then too so yeah. if there's some if there's a comfort level on on how much information you're receiving here in the direction that it's not forgetting as well and if we need multiple study sessions to further vet through in order to get it to um either a business or consent agenda action agenda item later um yeah we're certainly open to discuss that but it meets the, the council's goals at the same time um, being transparent for our community. I know for project boards, uh, it's we have a problem that we have to issue the contract within 45 days and um, the current process right up against the window. Well, we wait right. three touch when we need to. We can't, yeah. You can't, right. So, but I just don't want to get caught waiting three touch on a DA. When you got yeah, that's yeah. not gonna apply. <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna apply. Well, he's talking about contract awards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, okay. But but we yeah, want we want council direction in that case. Yeah. We don't want staff to be driving that, right? Yeah. That's this right. Good, a conscious decision yeah. of, to institute and maintain the three touch rule, and so staff wants to maintain that at the council's discretion, unless the council decides to change that. So, uh, but yeah, we can. And bring that up for yeah. future consideration of open up protocol menu again. I think waiving when we need to waive is fine. Yeah. It's always an option for us. Right. I like stopping when we need to stop, but providing some guidance. Hello. And and maybe some criteria on what what would be, you know what would be um suitable um for mm -hmm. three touch rule. Yeah. I'd rather um, weigh in on the okay, side that's less or more transparent and less uh, likely to be um, controversial. So I would line up, I would agree with Council Member Sherman. Because there's been situations where we're like, okay, all the information there has been given to us and we need to move. And and we do. And we when do. we get the Christian roll, we three such roll in. But I, I think Mark's saying that what criteria we want to allow a waiver of a three touch. So That's grant true. awards, absolutely. We don't want to lose a grant because it's going to take a month and a half to do it the, the three touch way. So we definitely want to waive the three touch. But do we want to waive a three touch for everything that happens? No, no. we don't. We, we, the criteria, I, I would say, would absolutely grant awards is definitely one of, is one yeah. of them. Um, I don't know what else can come up. <laughs> Yeah. You know the yeah. we we kind of wave a three touch for the arts pictures, which is yeah. Well, it's just, I'd rather wave them all, and then if we feel that we need to go deeper on something, we we'll go deeper on it. But that's just the yeah. yeah. So future topic we can certainly discuss in a study session. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's transition. I was uh, just thinking about the um, info law definition and how that fits in with our five year. For you know, to be after five years no longer applies. Starting that formula over, how that fits in. Just trying to kind of right size that um, process wise, but I think the bigger picture was you know how do we align our definitions across the code, and that's absolutely what we want to see. So, I, I guess I'll just leave it with this with the DA. I would hate to have four or three votes on DAs, yeah. and I see that happen because. One side is going to say, no, I'm not going to subsidize this developer. You know, and the other side is going to say, yeah, we need rooftops, right? And I think the importance of the transportation uh, improvement plan also needs to get looked at too. Because, you know, you guys provide us with the plan, right? You know, you feed us that, we ratify it. There's usually really no challenge on that each, each year. But we're structuring fees around that plan. And we can only execute that plan with these fees. So I think we need to have probably a little bit more robust process for going through the TIP every year. Mm -hmm. um, keeping this in mind, 
when we go through that, like bring this back to us and saying, when we add this project to the list, overall it's gonna, you know, increase total project list about this many million dollars or whatever. And tip should be commensurate with that or not, whatever we decide. But I think that will also, I don't know. With the potential funding sources attached to these projects, correct? Yeah. And if, it, yeah. if TIP is attached to that, or if it's or if it's the transportation benefit yeah. district and that's sunsetting in 2026, that has to be accounted for, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. And so it's in a way, it's like actually TIP should almost be projected out. Do we six years? I'm I'm a little concerned about this the UGA issues because should we have maybe a joint meeting with the counties and sit down and, and talk about this? Because I can see people wanting to annex into the city, building their stuff in the UGA why it's still under county control, and then asking us to annex them, and then we've got a dirt road we have to we have to pave. Or not. Well nothing says we have to well improve it. I don't think we should have dirt roads in the city, but uh, but I don't think we should be backdoored into doing one. I mean, I we got that. enough out there right now that we need to put to I think we have the we have the appropriate um, process set up with, with the comprehensive plans being updated at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Move through the countywide planning policies, the urban growth area, um, development standards. Um, I think there's interest at least talking uh, North County staff um, to maybe refine right. Um, those standards so they more appropriately align the city standards at the same time, knowing that it's in the UGA and that in all, all, in all likelihood it's going to be annexed in the city at some point. So um, I, th I think we'll have an appropriate process coming up. It's, you know, it's not quick, obviously. Um, it's going to take some time. Right. Okay. Cool. So, so not wide awake. Any questions. other questions? Any items for discussion? New no. items? No. No. Um, all right. This meeting is it, or this study session is adjourned at 7 11 p.m. Oh. Don't give the gamut the big deal. No. <laughs>